ears are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. Check podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. Keep up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the new sounds empire. Just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us and someone will play for you in just a moment. From NewSounds.org, this is our live performance series we call the Soundcheck Podcast. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, I'm John Schaefer. The Lebanese violinist and composer Lyal Shaker makes music that draws from Western classical music, but also Arabic classical music and jazz. She and her band Sarafand have released an album, a lovely record called Inner Rhyme, inspired by the meters of Arabic poetry. She and the band are here to play some of that music for us today. Beginning with a piece called On the Trunk of the Olive Tree, here is Lyal Shaker and Sarafand.
that is called On the Trunk of the Olive Tree. It's music from Lyal Shakur and her band Sarafond. You'll find it on Lyal's recent album called Inner Rhyme. That, of course, a live performance here in the studio with uh, Lyal playing the violin. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And uh, the band Philip Golub at our piano. Uh, we have Marwan Alam playing the double bass, Adam Malouf playing percussion, Jake Charkey playing the cello. And so three of the instruments are fretless. You can play any tuning. Philip at our piano is locked into Western tuning. Is that, <laughs> how do you, you, you clearly evoke a lot of Near Eastern sounds mm-hmm. in this music, but I guess you have to somehow kind of stay within the Western tuning, right? Um, yeah, so it's it's more about finding the the edges of both mm. and trying to understand how how harmony can work with a mode, not against it or superimposed on it. Um, I don't think that, you know, the, normally you, you like to oppose Western and Eastern and that implicitly means opposing harmony and, and melody right, or, right. or monody. I don't think it's um, as black and white as that. So... Um, it's more about finding the language that that will be common to everyone to understand. Now, what you just said is such a great metaphor for, <laughs> for you know, Western East cultures and people and, you know, uh, the idea that if we look, there are meeting places. And and that actually, uh, you have some of that in your background. You used to, you, do you still play with the West Eastern Divan Occasionally, um, less and less, just yeah. because of other professional commitments. Right, but but ex- explain to folks who don't know this amazing organization that <laughs> Edward Said and Daniel Barenboim founded. Exactly, so um, it was founded by Palestinian scholar Edward Said and Argentinian uh, Israeli conductor uh, Daniel Barenboim. And it's, a, it's an orchestra where uh, many uh, young people from all around the world, primarily it was um, for musicians of the Middle East, mm-hmm. Um, Israeli, Palestinian, yeah. Turkish, um, mm-hmm. just also from other Arab countries, also Spanish. And now it's become uh, a broader and even more inviting place. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just a place where it, it's not different from reality in a way. It's really a microcosmos of, of a society mm-hmm. with all of its beauty and complications, of course. But it is a place where everybody's equal. And that's the main difference. Yeah. And uh, inequality, everything becomes possible. Dialogue becomes possible. And that idea of harmony between, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can use that word in a purely musical sense, but in yeah. a broader sense as well. It's all about yeah. it's all about harmony. So that's the West Eastern Divan Ensemble Orchestra, depending on how big it is. Uh, but tell me about Inner Rhyme. So that that title refers to the kind of the meters of Arabic poetry. Is that right? Yes. So um, in, in, in Arabic poetry, we have the um, a principle that is very close to that of classical English poetry, which is scansion. So there is scansion in different meters, um, classical Arabic meters. And um, so you have so Arabic has a, a, something analogous to iambic pentameter, for example. Exactly, maybe not as uh, close, but the same principle. Yeah. Um, the principle is more of actually syllables, long, long and short syllables, mm-hmm. divided and subdivided, and the different combinations of them make a meter. We refer to the meter as bahr, which means uh, sea. So uh, different C's, yes, okay. 12 of them, and variations on these 12 meters. Ah. And uh, so I started to work on those um, just because of interest, because I, I felt that I really missed the presence of poetry. Um, I, wor- I work primarily in instrument instrumental music. Right. And um, I have to say that as much as music is very important in the Middle East, Arabic is, um, and Arabic language and poetry are even more important. So, and they're more, um, they just speak more widely to people. And I'm one of those people, and I, I really grew up with that. Yeah. And I just started to miss that presence in my life. I wanted to get it back somehow. And yet you chose to, to continue writing instrumental music and not to actually set some of those poems mm. to music. Why? Because I didn't, my, my aim was not to translate what the poetry says. I really just wanted to translate what the poetry 
felt like? Felt. Yeah, Make, makes you very feel. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, the album was produced by a musician who's very, you know, he's a central player on the experimental music scene in Montreal, uh, mm-hmm. Radwan Ghazi Mumna. Yes. Who is known for making albums that have kind of Near Eastern roots swimming in an electronic sea, you know, That's a true. haze of electronics. <laughs> And here he is working with you on what is really very kind of acoustic, intimate music. It's very different. Yeah. So it seems like a, an unusual choice of, a, a, an unusual connection for you to make. Yes. Well, um, first off, I, I know Radwan as a musician before I know him as a producer. I recorded on his last album, so we he have He records, just for folks who are interested, he records under the name Jerusalem in my heart. That's true. Yeah. And... And also, he's he's just a, v- a very understanding musician. Even as a producer, he's produced many different pe- many different artists of very different sounds. He's produced Godspeed You Black Emperor. He's produced right. Matana Roberts, and uh, you know other other artists. But like the the spectrum of it is extremely wide. And what I really wanted to do was work with him because he understands sound as part of part of the piece, really. Mm-hmm. And he really succeeded in catching catching that sound with us in the studio. Now, the, it's a beautiful record, and um, I think probably my favorite part of it is this suite, the Mhamas suite. Mm-hmm. What does that name refer to? Mhamas means five in Arabic. Five? Five. Okay. And it refers to a, a meter. Not the one that we play. We, we do play a piece in five, but it's not that one. Mhamas <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, means five, and it's... Uh, it also means a chorus. It's a chorus that they that they repeat during um, improvised poetry. Uh huh. Um, so, under that name, I wrote three little pieces, like suites, all inspired by oratory poetry. So every everything that is oral, and in uh, Bedouin dialects and local dialects. Wow. So not classical Arab po- Arabic. No, poetry, it's actually yeah. um, colloquial Arabic and dialectic Arabic. Yeah. And and the first of the three is this song you're going to do for us next called Hawal Yahanam. That's true. Uh, so what does that not title Hawal mean? Hawal Yahanam means uh, pass pass by or come by a herdsman. It's a young maiden speaking to a herdsman, asking her, uh, asking him if she's seen her, her gazelle, and the gazelle is actually the loved one. Uh huh. So okay. Very Let's beautiful and simple uh, song and very beautiful. Poetry, very simple poetry. Well, and also uh, kind of evocative of the biblical song of songs, you know, the, That's the gazelle. That's very true. And yes, yeah. very All right. true. Uh, Lyle Shocker is here with the band Sarafan. Let's hear another live performance of some music that you'll find on her album called Inner Rhyme.
That's really very nicely done. Lyle Shocker and the band Sarafond with a performance of a tune called Hawel Yachanam exactly. from the Mchamas Suite. You'll find that on Lyle's record called Inner Rhyme. So um, the idea that uh, we were talking about before, finding the harmony between the Near Eastern scales and Western harmonies, when that song began, Philip at the piano is just providing a drone, which yes. left you free to go ahead and, you know, do something that sounded very non-Western to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then by the end of the piece, you'd, you'd come together. And mm -hmm. uh, so are you working in kind of m modes, I mean, uh, scales that, that are different from major and minor? So we do work on different scales, of course. Um, for this piece, for example, um, so we, I come in, for example, with an idea that I'm like, okay, um, this is the scale, and um, I really need to find its, its, its harmonic spectrum. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you try, and it doesn't work, or sometimes some pieces work, some pieces don't work. So um, it's really about, of course, finding the right uh, uh, harmonic spectrum for this specific mode. But it's even more about finding uh, the right colors that will that will help that mode to strive, and that's where the collective work is really important. Well, so we yeah. So now, how much of this is like kind of strictly notated in a Western chamber music way, and how much room is there for improvisation? There's a lot of room for improvisation, and there is some notation, of course, but. Even that is really we put into question every time we rehearse. There are things that we'll uh, check again. For example, Philip will tell me this this harmony here wouldn't work this way. It would it would need another chord here, or um, you know there are different ways that we all put in uh, pitch in our ideas. Yeah. For example, um, if I were to speak about the meters, for the rhythmic meters, um, maybe I would have an idea. But then, for example, Adam would, would be like, okay, uh, here I would like to change that four into something else or try to use something different and it's it really works this way like mm -hmm. every every piece is there's a conception for it but every part of it is also put into question hmm. interesting because you know it was kind of fun listening to you guys setting up earlier today because jazz standards kept it seemed like a jazz concert was trying to break out among the, the members of the band yeah. so there's definitely that aspect of yeah. of what you guys all do uh, and the band is called sarah fond not sarah bond the, the no the, the, the baroque <laughs> dance not sarah bond <laughs> sarah you, <laughs> you change one one letter and it's a very different meaning what is what does sarah fond refer to sarah fond refers to two places that are very dear to my heart one of them is um, the south of Lebanon, where I come from, and it's a village there. And um, and the other is a village in the north of Palestine that was completely depopulated in 1948. And Sarafand is a reminder of something that is even older than this history we know. It's It comes from Phoenician, which means Sarapta. So it's just a reminder of something that is so ancient, that is beyond us, and that can continue to live wherever you recreate your space and your haven, whatever mm. that might be. So originally a Phoenician word. Interesting. Like most cities and villages in, in the Middle East. Yeah. yeah. So um, we mentioned that you've, you know, you're from Lebanon, you're based here in New York, you've made this record with Radwan, who's also Lebanese but is based in Montreal. Recently, here in the studio, we had the Syrian-born Kenan Azme, the clarinetist, mm -hmm. and I remember getting an email from him uh, touting some concert he was doing, and it had a photo of him, and if I'm not mistaken, that photo was credited to you. Yes. So are you a photographer as well? No, I'm not his photographer. I'm his wife, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so that was just <laughs> You got to make it work when you're, you know, on a budget. <laughs> here I was going to ask, wow, do all of the near eastern emigres here take in the it, area take photos know each, of each other? other but no. <laughs> it's a little more a little closer than that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh have you guys played together? 
we play together off and on. Okay. Um, we've we've worked on a project together this year that's called Iphigenia, huh. and it's a documentary opera. And here again, we've had Jake with us, and we have Adam, and we had um, we also had Nick Dunson, who's um, the bassist on the record right. for the premiere in New York. And uh, we will be presenting some duet pieces this year and some concerts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you're off to Paris this weekend, right? To, yes. To do something that's a little more Western classical, it sounds like. I'm. I'm. That's correct. I'm going for a concert on Sunday. That is a collaboration with a Baroque um, ensemble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you play Baroque music as well. Yes. Okay. Um, the piece you're going to play next is called Return to Jaikor. This is the uh, opening track on the record. Where is Jaikor? Jaikor is uh, in Basra, which is in southern Iraq. And it's based on the poem by the same name, written by Badr Shakir Sayyab, who is uh, one of the pioneers of free verse poetry, and who uh, knew exile. But he was also, other than being a revolutionary figure, he also revolutionized poetry as, uh, itself in the in the Arab yeah. world. 20th century, 19th century? Uh, 20th century. 20th century. All right, well, let's hear the piece. Uh, Lyal Shakar and the band Sarafan with Return to Jaikor.
Turn to Jaikor is the name of the piece. It's the opening track on the album Inner Rhyme by Lyle Shocker and the band Sarafond, but the closing piece in this set that they've been doing for us here today uh, in the Soundcheck podcast from newsounds.org. And for those of you who are not watching us on Facebook or YouTube and were wondering what the hell those sounds were emanating from the piano, uh, Philip with one hand was playing the keys and with the other, uh, rubbing a credit card on the strings, <laughs> which was an interesting kind of impromptu prepared piano sound. Um, Lyle, the record, Inner Rhyme, is a really beautiful record, and it's great to have the chance to hear some of it live. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you very much. This is Soundcheck. Soundcheck.